Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. In this video, we're going to be doing our final REW testing on the Klipsch R115 SW subwoofers to see if we can get a little bit better frequency response. Now, before we jump into the video, if you're into home theater, audio and video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, before we jump into the video, this channel right as we speak has 22,804 subscribers. Now, honestly, guys, I never dreamed that the channel would ever get to that point. Um, so that's just blowing me away. We've got 1,817,350 watch time minutes just in the past 28 days alone. And the channel has increased 3,779 new subscribers just this month. And so guys, that's incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you guys. So I'm enough rambling. I just wanted to express my appreciation to you. Man, I love it. I want to create great content for you guys. And so with that said, let's jump into some more measurements with REW. <laughs> So here you can see the first R115 SW subwoofer in between the center channel and the front right tower. And then the second subwoofer is in between my front and rear row up on my riser. So it's facing the right wall. And this is the frequency response that we ended up in the last video with the subwoofers in this particular location. So now what we want to do is move it to our second position to see if we can get a better result. So here you can see I've moved the first R115 SW subwoofer to the center of the room up front. And then I've moved the second subwoofer to the center of the room in the middle. And so they're both facing each other. I've heard that you can have opposing subwoofers, one on one wall, one on the other facing each other, about mid wall, so in the center. And you can also do that if you had four subwoofers, you'd put one in the front middle, one in the rear middle, and then one on the right center and one on the left center. So basically they're the center of all four of your walls. Well, in this case, I don't have four subwoofers. So we're gonna see what two subwoofers in the center of the room, in the front and in the rear and see what that looks like. So now that we have the subwoofers moved to position number two, we're gonna come up here and click measure and come down here to start measuring. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come up here. We wanna make sure we keep these straight. So I'm gonna put position two. One thing that's nice also is that you can add notes about this measurement. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to describe where the subwoofers are placed. And so I'm gonna put one R115SW front center. And then I'm going to do one R115SW rear center. And so that way we have some notes. And if I click on the first position, you'll see I added some notes. One R115 subwoofer in between the center and front right speaker. And one R115SW on the left wall between the seats on the riser facing towards the right wall. So you can be very, very specific in what that measurement was for. And so let's take a look at the graph here. So the red line represents position one. So that's where we had the measurement in our last video. And you can see, again, we had this big kind of null here. This is a lack of base, definitely not a good thing. And so by moving the two subwoofers to another location, you can see the response actually got quite a bit better. We got a little bit less output here, but if you kind of think of an imaginary line, actually we can probably take a line somewhere about right here. If you take the line about say 87 decibels, if I were to draw a line right across here, you can see this green line stays really close to that for the most part, except for right here. 
So at 29 hertz, it begins to decline and it drops very significantly. It drops significantly at about 34 hertz. And then it begins to immediately pick back up until we get back up to about 40 hertz. So basically around 30 hertz, maybe, yeah, so about 30 hertz to close to 40 hertz, that's the, the range that it's kind of struggling in. So now we're gonna move the subwoofers to a third and final location. I wanna move the subwoofers to the front left and the front right corners of the room and let's see how that compares. And here we have the R115SW subwoofer in the front left corner. And then we've got the second R115SW subwoofer in the far right front corner. So now that we have them in the third position, let's come up here to measure and click start measuring. All right, we have an absolute disaster. <laughs> I want you guys to see this. I'm gonna turn off position one. I'm gonna turn off position two. Holy cow. We have a Grand Canyon right in the middle. So this is horrible. So this might not have been so bad here, but this, oh my gosh, that's a disaster. So as you can see, a lot of people tend to put their subwoofers in the corners. In this room, that's probably the worst position that we could possibly put them. So I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna type position three, and then down in the notes, we're gonna put subs in front corners. Okay, so that way we've got some information there. Now, one thing I do wanna do before we kinda of recap on these three positions, I do wanna play with phase. A lot of guys have been mentioning in the comments, have I had a chance to try different phase adjustments to see how will that affect it? And so what we can do is come down here to the notes again, and we're gonna say these were both set at phase at zero degrees. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch one subwoofer, the left subwoofer to 180 degrees so there's a switch on the back of the unit so i'm just going to reach back here and change that to 180. so we're going to run the same measurement All right, that's even worse. <laughs> so again, so phase is not in our uh, best interest to change the phase on this. Just for curiosity, I'm going to change subwoofer two to 180. And let's take one final measurement just to see. So we'll click measure and start measuring. Okay, so again, you can see it's definitely not working out right here. These both look almost identical. And so I'm just gonna come and delete this one. So here you can see with the regular phase at zero, we had this big dip, but when I took them out of phase, we lost just a ton of output. I mean, we went down from 83 down to about 65 decibels all the way across. So we lost quite a bit of volume there. So again, that's not to your best interest, but if you don't have some software like REW with a calibrated microphone, you won't know what you're doing. You're just totally guessing at what position should you have them in your room and what setting you need to have for phase. But with REW, as you can see, you can actually physically see what is happening in your room where there are peaks, where there are nulls, 
and then you can begin to play with some positioning. Some subwoofers like the SVS PB16 and the PB3000 and the PB4000, they have what they call a variable phase adjustment. So instead of just zero or 180, you can do increments from zero to 180. So you can play around with 45 degrees or 90 degrees or 60 degrees and just see if that affects. I've heard some guys that have adjusted their phase on one or both of the subwoofers and they got a lot better results. So again, it's all a lot of trial and error. There may be a scientific way to kind of figure this out mathematically, but I'm not that guy. So I just have fun doing this for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of this video and we'll catch you in the next video.